back to reporting about the labor market and the fact that people, they just don't want to work and, and their laziness is being passed on to the customer in the form of increased burrito prices. That's right. No. <laughs> I'm reading from, this comes courtesy of The Federalist and one of their Wunderkid uh, uh, staff. Um, this is by Kylie Zempel, writing in The Federalist. <laughs> That's an awesome. Kylie Zempel. Man. We were uh, the German Americans. Yeah. They really knocked it out of the park with the names. Kylie Zempel writing in the Federalist. My Chipotle bowl just got more expensive, and it's the federal government's fault. Life is breezier on unemployment than behind the Chipotle counter, so the franchise is trying to lure workers back, but it's making my lunch more spendy and exposing lies about who really eats the cost of rising wages. It's making my lunch well, more spendy. When I saw this, I thought that Kylie Zimple was like. She is like a sleeper cell because this is like this is perfect. Like this is like, you know, this was gaining some traction in uh, more conservative circles. People who are still unabashedly, you know, openly uh, economically conservative. Most people, they don't see things this way. But among the more conservative sectors, this was picking up some speed. But this is that viewpoint so nakedly. Because it's like, oh, what, 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 they should work like you do? Yeah. Writing a journal about your lunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. It's just like life's breezier on unemployment than behind a Chipotle counter. It's like, well, yeah, that's true. But life is certainly breezier if it's some like make work job at the Federalist where you fart out stories like this, insulated from any market competition whatsoever. I mean, like that's the easiest gig you can get. Yeah, I mean, I'm you're you're not like Kylie Zimple. You're never going to work at Chipotle. What are you, you complaining about? You get yeah. you get paid to do this. Does it really matter if your burrito costs an extra dollar a month? I'm pretty sure it's easier to write articles for the Federalist than it is to fill out forms for unemployment. Yeah, I mean, like, like dude, you, uh, dude, the forms you fill out for unemployment are scrutinized a hell of a lot more closely than anything that's published in the Federalist. You, you can write anything in the Federalist, like literally, you anything. If you know the right guy, you can say any pitch. You can. My lawn jockey's got my got my kid kicked out of uh, the school band. <laughs> you know, fight for me. All right, here we go. Chicken bowl, brown rice, blackened pinto beans, pico, hot salsa, lettuce, cheese, sour cream. That's all I want. It's just that first sentence because that's that's all I want, and what I want is every single ingredient at Chipotle in a bowl. Cut to and <laughs> and cut to cut to American military in every base, endless bombings, <laughs> just people in cages. This is how I get it. <laughs> like this is the entire conservative project. Black and Chipotle beans, lady, are you crazy? And you're saying you don't want to pay extra for that? Yeah, think of what you're. Think a of, lot of you, beans. She's stealing from Chipotle every day. When she just, just asked for eating yeah. beans. God damn it. <laughs> so he goes here, and I want it for seven sixty plus tax. You greedy pig. Seven sixty plus <laughs> oh tax God. for every ingredient in Chipotle stuffed into a bowl. Seven sixty. Also, why do you want it for that price? Just because that was the price that they put it at? What if they put it at something else? You'll pay for it no matter you, what. You, you yeah, you're you gonna you're just gonna that. do it. You're not gonna make your own lunch. You don't know how to do that. So it goes here. Thanks to the ill-named American Rescue Plan and remarkably short-sighted employment decisions, the federal government has jacked up the price of my Chipotle order. Sure, the restaurant is the one raising its prices by about four percent, but the federal government is the cause. <laughs> for, for, so four percent. Four percent. Four percent. What does that work out, out of? Out of seven hundred cents. That's. Like that's under forty cents. Well, also there's that's no nothing proof. There's no proof that that's why they're doing it. That that's just something that the Chamber of Commerce says as a propaganda operation to try to make people turn against unemployment benefits. There's been a big surge in in commodities prices too. That probably had something to do with it. There's a ton of other things that could go into price costs. Uh, at, at a place like that, yeah, with, with a massive industrial uh, size uh, uh, purchaser like them. It, just taking it for their word for it that that's why it's up is it's it's literally just furthering the propaganda operation. Commodity prices rose way more than that, you know. Yeah. In the in the past thirty years, far far outpacing the CPI. But you know, no articles about that. And I, I saw the idea that's like I want it for seven sixty plus tax. Oh, like you won't pay for it at eight dollars and ten cents plus tax. Give me a break. Shut up. And it's like it's still a good deal. You're still getting every ingredient in the Chipotle buffet shoved into a bowl that's then stuffed into your face for under $10, okay? All right? 
uh, across the restaurant industry, chains such as Chipotle, Starbucks, and McDonald's have been increasing hourly pay for employees of company-owned locations in a bid to attract new workers and retain their current ones, NBC News reported. Consumer demand has come roaring back for restaurant meals, but the workforce has been slower to return, pushing eateries to sweeten the deal. Did you catch that? Restaurants have had to bribe current and prospective workers with fatter paychecks to lure them off their backsides and back to work. Uh, that's just called the free market, Miss Zempel. Uh, the, the bribing them, that's called wages. And if you Bri- can't, Bribing uh, them with the, uh, with the surplus uh, value that they created. That's pretty f***ed up of them. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, you have a workforce out there that's um, not willing to do the job for the uh, wage that you're paying. Then, oh, I guess you'll just have to bribe. I just love the idea that that's illegal or something. That this is like they're acting in a corrupt way by asking for more money. And guess what? Because it's, because it's making their treaty treats more expensive. That's the thing about these people is that there's been this half-assed attempt to try to create some like worker-centric conservatism. But at the end of the day, everyone sees themselves first and foremost as a customer, as a consumer. And so whenever there becomes a conflict between their uh, consumer interests and what they imagine to be the interests of anyone who is, giving, who is providing them with the, the service or the good that they seek... They're going to say, yeah, no, you should, be, uh, you should be forced to work like corvée labor. You should be chained to the, the fixin's bar so that I can get food on my terms. It's sort of yeah, similar to how— Yeah, you can't, you can't make like a Heron Folk Workers Party when 75% of your voting base like calls the police when their Grubhub's like five minutes late. <laughs> yeah. When it's all John Pedoritz. Uh, I mean, it's also like it's so sort of similar to the way that like libertarians have been um, arguing against the Civil Rights Act for the last like five or six decades because they're like, well, I mean, it eliminates the right of free association and private businesses should be able to uh, refuse service to anyone based on any criteria or consideration. You're like, "Mm, okay, well, uh, what's happening now is that a lot of employers and, uh, you know, uh, places of business are saying that you can't work there or shop there unless you've got a vaccine. And wouldn't you know it? Who's the most opposed to that? It's these same group of shithead libertarians. So it's just like it, it, they, 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 they see no problem with the idea that um, allowing private, <laughs> private businesses to refuse service to people based on their like, race, gender, or religion isn't a problem because they, would, they never would think for even half a second that they would be on the receiving end of that. But then when it comes to vaccines, it's time to squeal about your liberty. Going on, she says... That's what happens when the federal government steps in with a sweet unemployment deal, incentivizing workers to do a little less labor and a little more lounging. Under the CARES Act, the original coronavirus spending bill, the federal government handed out an extra $600 per week with no eligibility requirements, meaning even millionaires could collect it to unemployed people. According to a report from the Heritage Foundation, oh, well, you know, in that case, from the Heritage Foundation, I'm going to take this very seriously. The average full-time American worker earning $48,000 a year could take home 15% more from unemployment under the CARES Act than remaining in his full-time job. This sounds a little absurd. And it is in almost every sense. It's important to remember, however, that however spendy and unsustainable these subsidies were, they were the product of a different time when onerous government restrictions slammed business doors and kept many people out of the workplace. But then things changed. Businesses started to reopen and the unemployment rate dropped from 14.8% at its peak in April 2020 to 6.7% by the end of the calendar year, meaning many Americans were getting back to work by last Christmas. Okay, so then what are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? What's the problem? Yeah, the, the, the burrito might be more expensive. I love that she just keeps saying spendy as a word. It's very annoying. Yeah, she went to the University of Pinterest to learn how to write. <laughs> Nonetheless, the short-sighted federal government decided to keep doling out unemployment checks months later. As part of their exorbitant $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan spending bill, Washington politicos kept writing $300 checks, which would have remained $600 if Democrats got their way, on the taxpayer's dime and on top of state unemployment benefits to Americans who weren't working. Added to the average state unemployment check of $330 per week, the $300 federal subsidy that Americans could sit at home for $630 a week, or more than $32,000 per year, about double the national minimum wage. That's a pretty sweet deal. It's no surprise that burger joints in my beloved burrito heaven have struggled to get workers back on the payroll. My beloved, bur- burrito, my bur- beloved burrito heaven. It's Chipotle. It is the worst trash imaginable. Oh it's my okay. god! It's, it's like, fine. No, no, it's, it's like it's, it's like the most the like job. mid mid it's food. Mid. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's fine. Here, exactly like, as as Felix said. It's burrito purgatory. Yeah. yeah. It's. It, I mean, look. It, it's. It's. I mean, it's better than some fast food options, but like, I can't imagine just being like, like a Chipotle is my neighborhood favorite. 
If Chipotle is your favorite food, you are just like, yeah, you don't have an internal monologue. Most mustelids have like higher degrees of self perception than you do. If that's like your favorite food, it's fine. There's nothing like wrong with it. I mean, it, sometimes it's, it's like, like a, as a food of last resort when you just want to get like a brick of fucking like food in your gut to just like, you know, just sort of like as ballast so that you can continue on your, your labors and functions of a day. You could do worse than Chipotle, but like, I, I just like eating there every day, calling it my, my own personal heaven. Uh, just if you eat the yeah, if you eat there every day, like one of your grandparents was a Labrador. <laughs> I mean, the thing like, all, come all, on, because this was precipitated by a, a, a Chamber of Commerce announcement about this for, for the exact purpose of putting this out there. She might never have even gone to fucking Chipotle. This whole thing might just be in the voice of, well, what do what do American Cretans like? Well, they really like Chipotle, so I'm gonna slather on my Chipotle love in this thing so that they feel like I'm on their side in the consumer war to keep cheaper burritos. She writes, conservatives warned about this, of course. People with one ounce of forethought knew exactly where massive unemployment perks would lead. You can't pay people handsomely to stay home and then expect them to jump back into the Chipotle uniforms. But this whole Chipotle price... Would you ever do that job? You would Would never... Would you ever fucking do that job? Would Would anyone you know? Yeah. You would never do that. You would never fucking do that. She goes... But this whole pro Chipotle price hike reveals another thing about conservatives, have, another thing conservatives have long been right about. When companies have to raise their wages, they don't absorb those costs, they pass them off on you. In an effort to bring in additional 20,000 workers, Chipotle announced in May that it would raise the hourly average wage to $15 by the end of the month, the same dollar figure Democrats have pushed as a federal minimum wage. Give people a living wage, they demand, for entry-level jobs that were never intended to support full families. Oh, well, they were never intended to, but I got news for you about what they are now. I mean, what are we talking about? Where where are the other other jobs? Where are the other jobs for people that are supposed to support full families? Can they just get a job in a fucking factory? Well, I mean, they should get a a job for a think tank or a magazine like The Federalist that is funded entirely out of pocket by some fucking vampire that is... Exactly. That has no... As absolutely like... Kylie Zimple's writing has never once been subject to any market force ever. For clicks, are, yeah. for views, for ad dollars, for fucking for uh, against better writers, she's never had any competition. It's just if you, if you're if you're a conservative college student, you're fed into these fucking programs, and they give you a make work job at some place like the Federalist. If you if you have no shame and you come from a family background where this kind of thinking is, uh, I don't know, encouraged, then like you got it made. You got it made. Yeah, this is. Um Usually when we read, like, goofy conservative, like, Federalist things, it's, like, fun and, like, it's hard to get too mad at a lot of them because a lot of them are so patently ridiculous, right? Like, you know, a lot of them are like, oh, you know, I I, I called the police because, you know, a, a child on my block, like, dressed up like little Zan for Halloween. Like, I saw temporary tattoos and I had a panic attack. I like I, I some insane personal problem or like Rod Dreher where it gets like a little dark like the exorcism story but it's still so like they're so alien to me that it's like kind of funny but this is just like this is so fucking repulsive because yeah that's exactly it like writing is such an easy job already if you can I'm sorry like if, if you dedicate yourself to it and you can't do it like you probably just suck I'm sorry yeah and then to even take what little like market force there is out of writing and to be this person and like demand people just shuffle into these soul crushing positions like there's anything like there's any other fucking job for people that like uh, don't have a college degree or even do just have a four year degree and no personal or who just don't like, have the conservative so social network repulsive. to just give you a fucking job like this at the Federalist like you think Kylie Zemper has ever been paid in her writing career anything close to what a market would actually like demand that she earn for the articles like, no. give me cheaper burritos? Yeah, no. Who, if Kylie Zemper left the federal list, who would follow her? What list of subscribers would come? Or is she just, she's sort of like the literary equivalent of someone shoveling slop at Chipotle? Yeah, yeah. but getting paid a hell of a lot more. And probably with way them, more. Some, I don't know. Having a way easier life, never having to worry about the things they worry about. So she goes here, uh, they demand, uh, give people a living wage, they demand, for entry-level jobs that were never intended to support full families. All the while, they shush conservatives who protest that a $15 minimum wage at McDonald's, for instance, would raise prices, harming many of the same low-income Americans who dine there. 
That's exactly what's been happening at McDonald's. Not if their wages are higher, too. Yes, exactly. They fucking afford it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> well, the thing here that I enjoy, though, is that and this whole genre that has emerged uh, in the last few months, uh, these articles freaking out about unemployment, is that it does reveal uh, the the coercion, the the repressive uh, force at the heart of capitalism that is obscured by the fact that that the thing that is making people go to work is just the threat of poverty, the threat of hunger, the threat of losing your uh, home or your health insurance. Because that's not, you know, uh, that's not being carried out by the state explicitly in the form of, you know, an army of of of, of uh, overseers or something. It becomes invisible. Uh, but when people are, are like, get back to work, fucking peons, uh, or it, it's wrong for you to not fear uh, starvation uh, more uh, than working a demeaning, very, very low wage job. They're showing, oh, yeah, this thing actually is as coercive as any of the horrible systems that they claim to be opposing. Well, it's just that the coercion is is invisibilized. Well, yeah, and here they're just putting it right out in the open. Is, that, is that it seems like it's all free. Like in the free market, yeah. it's just like these are just contracts being entered to by free individuals. And if, hey, if you don't want the demeaning job, you don't have to do it. Well, in order for it to be a free, like a free decision or an actual negotiation, there would have to be an option of surviving without work. There would have yes. to be like a generous social welfare system. And on top of that, a UBI that would basically be like a permanent federal unemployment insurance that could make it so that, yeah, you could get by with not just not working a job. And that way, if you choose to work a job, well then, well, then that choice actually means something. It's a choice that you're actively making rather than being, you know, disciplined through the, mar through the fear of poverty or starvation into doing. Just cl finishing out here, it says, um, that's exactly what's been happening at McDonald's, where the traditional dollar menu has become a relic of the past and prices have soared as wages have gone up. I mean, like... I understand, like, the restaurant businesses, like, in the restaurant business right now, like, prices are going up because, like, they, they're having to pay a lot more for things like meat and fish or whatever. But for a company like McDonald's, like, I don't know, I don't know if the dollar menu is still there or not, but, like, are, are their prices rising dramatically? Well, I, I went to, I, I went to, I got uh, there now, I believe, I was just there the other day, uh, the BTS meal. Uh, it is $5 per nugget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the BTS if you, meal. If you... If you can't buy the same amount of food for one dollar that you could literally twenty years ago, yeah, call the police. Just get get like repurpose ice to force people into these positions until there is literally no inflation in the price of food. It exists in everything else. It exists in housing. It exists in cars. It exists in everything else that you don't give a shit about. But like, if you can't get the same amount of food, this is a grand societal problem. If there's any inflation in food prices over a 20-year period. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, she, she finishes out here saying, when the federal government pays restaurant workers to stay home, home is where many of them will stay. And when Chipotle needs to compensate for it by dangling a 15-hour minimum wa a 15 hour ma wage in front of the low-skill teens who work there... Okay, I'm sorry. It is not low-skill teens who are working at McDonald's and Chipotle anymore. I mean, some of them are, but a lot of these are just people with families. I never. And I'm, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. The wage that they're paying wasn't intended to support a family when we started the service economy well, that in this mean country. Anything. That's but it doesn't gibberish. mean that's anything. It never meant anything. What, what the fuck? It, uh, the, what, what, there was there ever a time when restaurants weren't open during school days? <laughs> yeah. Was there ever a time yeah. when you go to McDonald's at three in the afternoon on a weekday and it was closed? That was never true. So therefore, those jobs were always for adults. So she, what adult? Jo what adult job? Should the people working in Chipotle get, according to her? Well, I mean, like, I, I, th I think, like, I think if you, I think if you put that to her, she would just say, "Well, they need, they, they should have invested their time earlier in life and skills so that they could get a job writing for the Federalist. So they should have gone to college." If or ever, something. yeah, but that is her. Like, oh, they should have gone to college. Well, if everyone goes to college, that doesn't increase the amount of jobs. You fucking dingbat. If she worked at Chipotle, she would toss her fucking. She would drown herself in the cilantro vat within the first hour. <laughs> So you like, so gets here, uh, by dangling a $15 an hour wage in front of the low-skilled teens who work there. I just love that phrase, low-skilled teens. Like, what a fucking, what a, what a fucking, what a rude thing to say to people who fucking make You're a low-skilled adult, yeah. and you'll never be anything <laughs> yeah. but that. You have no skills. If I left you in the woods, you would be, like, fucking, fu fucking vultures would be circling you within a minute. <laughs> 
within a fucking minute, you have nothing. You're nobody. I could launch you into space, and then an identical fucking blonde woman with like uneven dimples would replace you. Wait, I feel like no one fucking cares. How did you guess she was blonde? (laughs) Federalist writer. Yeah. <laughs> Kylie Zimple. I gotta say, uh, I, I don't think I'd want to meet a high skilled teen. That yeah. they sound terrifying to me. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> so goes I, have here. A, I have a certain set of, set of skills. I always know who imposter is, goaded. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes here. Uh, so Dude, put that in the promo. He says the franchise will stuff that extra cost right into your burrito. Yeah, by raising prices 4%. Give me a fucking break. See, the final, the final sentence here, she says, Chipotle broke my heart a little today, but big government is breaking my budget. You don't have a fucking monthly budget. What are you talking about? Oh, or a and, heart. Or, or, like, or the idea that like a 4% increase in the cost of your burrito bowl will break your fucking budget when you work a job at the Federalist. Give me a fucking break. It just says here Kylie <laughs> Zemple is an assistant editor at The Federalist. Follow her on Twitter. It doesn't list any other jobs that she does. No, no. It says, okay, her Twitter oh account God. says... What a fucking psycho. Her Twitter account says editor, Federalist. Previously DC Examiner and Nat Geo Travel. Not the Bachelor Beat reporter. Wisconsin native. Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> what, a, what an amazing CV. Yeah. God she got the, damn She got the Joe about- McCarthy Fellowship at the Heritage Foundation as like a 16-year-old. <laughs> fucking, and she's been riding it ever fucking since. Fucking low, low, no-skill adult getting paid way more money than her fucking labor is worth on any free market. Get the fuck out of here. Eat your burrito bowl. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, and you're you're by the way, if she really does eat this, if like our conspiracy theory that she goes to an evil restaurant isn't true, she's going to keep doing it. Yeah, no, she's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be like all those fucking round balls of shit who are like, oh, I'm boycotting the NFL because of Kaepernick. Well, what are you gonna do? Talk to your family? No, you're gonna <laughs> fucking watch that game, fatso. 